Merry Christmas, viewers, and I hope next year will be a happy new year for all of you. I'm doing a special video today and uploading it. It's classic video game reviews. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, how's it going, viewers? Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. I'm going to be doing something a little different. Um, old video games mean a lot to me. I mean, I had a lot of fun. I grew up in arcades playing standalone video games. I probably pumped away hundreds of dollars and quarters into those machines just to enjoy maybe 30, 40 seconds or even a few minutes of play. I mean, the games back then, you had to have skill and you had to develop skill and it cost money because when you died, you started at the beginning. As games improved, you could put a quarter in and start where you died and keep going. I mean, I love these old video games. In fact, I bought the 40th anniversary Pac-Man Arcade 1-Up, and in the upper right corner over here, I will post a link to that build video that I did a while back. I mean, it was a lot of fun building, and it's a lot of fun to play. I enjoy it. It also has Galaga here which is another game I really loved playing when I did the old arcades. Then there is the thing I found here at Half Price Books a while back. The Midway Arcade Origins Xbox 360 disc. This has 30 plus games on the disc. But I don't remember all of them. I do remember a lot of them, but I'm going to deal with in this video maybe talking over or interjecting. Depends on how long of gameplay I do get just playing the game because many of the games on this disc were intended for standalone arcade games. And so the controller's setups, you had a joystick and buttons located either to the left or right in which you had to control. And so these games on this disc are adapted for a console controller. So the feel and mechanics are a little different, and it's a little confusing. So I don't get through the game as quickly, and I die quickly. So I might get maybe 10, 30, 40 seconds of play and I'm dead. But I will hopefully be able to talk over the games I remember fondly enough to kind of show you and give you an idea. I mean, it was a lot of fun just playing around with this disc. I remember having it at some point, probably got rid of it, gave it away to someone, sold it. But when I found it at half price books, I said, I'm buying this. And again, it was a lot of fun just kind of tinker around with the games a little bit and play them. So let's get on with the video. There is a really cool intro to this, so I'm going to let it play out for a little bit. And then we will get into actually playing some of the video games that I enjoy.
that was a real nice intro. And it got me a little excited to actually play some of these games. And what I remember about this is you could flip through the video game machine at, that represented the game and play it. Now, some of these games I don't remember or I didn't play, so I'm not going to cover them. But I will cover and talk over the games I do remember and probably spent way too much money on. Okay, one of the first games I remember playing was Defender. And you look at the game controllers and they're designed for a console now. And as it loads up here, I think I can hit select. Yeah, Bradmanian Devil was a nickname for me. And all I remember about Defender was it started out really mellow and then it just amped up in speed. As I just mentioned, this game starts out pretty mellow, but then it just gets insane in speed. In like 30 seconds, you go from, hey, I can beat this game to, oh crap. This thing is now moving. It's crazy. And the whole point of the game was to defend those little people on the bottom of the screen from being abducted by green aliens who just appear out of nowhere and shoot at you. And you've got to try and shoot them without getting killed. And they are coming from all directions. Yeah, I died quickly. And you could wind up spending, I don't know, hours and thousands of dollars and quarters just to improve yourself. Now I'm going to move on to the next game that I remember. Gauntlet. Uh, this was actually a great buddy game in a sense. If you tried to play as a single player, you had to have some strategy. But if you went in with a bunch of buddies and you played, you could hack and slash your way through the dungeon. Like right now, you get food for health, treasure, and then you gotta. I'm gonna pause the game and resume it. It goes through the explanation and then you flip through and you can choose. Your character, yeah, going through the explanation again, but uh, yeah, let's see. How the hell? Yeah, here we go. Level one. And you press start. And I'm playing the barbarian who throws axes. You get some treasure. And you can collect magic potions. And those magic potions, if you use them, kill everything on the screen. And again, there was a tactic. You had to, yeah, these ghosts hit you, they kill you. And the tactic was you kind of line yourself up with the kill the uh, ghosts and kill the uh, they need to open door. Uh, skull things. And you can enter here and fight and take down ghosts. And you see all those ghosts that are... Uh, building up there. If you had a magic potion, you could wipe them out. Yeah, this was a good buddy game where you, again, just had each other's backs and played through them. And yeah, I'm getting killed here, so I'm going to exit on to the next level maybe, or you got to kind of come in low and ghosts will come at you. Probably going to die here. Ah, I get some more food. Yeah, this Warrior, was a difficult game just to play out. on your own, oh, but it was a oh. lot of fun to play and well spawned over. And like I said, I just, you know, in this case, I believe you could put a quarter in this game and start from where you oh. died. Or maybe you started at the beginning. I don't really know. Uh, just the indicator that when the character died, you started at the beginning means that, yeah, you, I probably wasted a lot of quarters. There's a magic oh, potion. And if you use the magic potion, you could wipe everything out on the screen. 
and you kind of had a little strategy here, and you got the characters and the ghosts and stuff to follow you and build them up to a level to where you could just zap them all with the magic potion. And it is, it's, it, it was a lot of fun to play. And, well, I'm going to see if I can do it this way. You kind of stand here and you just kind of mow them down because the way these ghosts came in, they came in in line with your character. They didn't try and swarm you too well. This is primitive logic for video games. So, yeah, you kind of had to position yourself and line up the ghosts and just kind of get them to come at you and chop them down. And you stayed near the walls if you were playing as an individual player. So I'm going to let it play out for a little bit, and then I'm going to cut to the next game that I remember. Oh. Okay, a poor use of Magic Potion. Again, you tried to get as many bad guys to follow you and bunch up on screen so that you could just wipe them all out because it didn't wipe out like the skulls or anything like that where the ghosts come from, but you did wipe them out as much as you could. I'm going to move on to another video game and we can... Uh, go from there that I remember playing and wasting a lot of money on. Joust was another one that was really fun. And again, with the controllers adapted to play on the console control, it's a little hard to control. But basically, you were a... Fight on a flying ostrich bird creature, and you tried to bump into the other guys and hit them in the head, and they would turn into eggs, and you could collect the eggs before they hatched, which is what I'm going to try and do. Again, the controls are a little weird on here, and it was a lot easier to play a video game with proper controllers. Now, this guy's good. I just got him, so he would have jumped onto the bird and respawned. Now, I survived the first wave, and you see how weird that is. Again, it's really hard to play with an Xbox 360 controller. My character died, and you gotta kind of get flopping around and attacking these guys. I'll let it play out. Um, let's see, Marble Madness. I enjoyed this game a little bit when I played it in the arcade. Uh, you gotta get, roll this marble down ramps without falling off cliffs, and eventually it gets a little more complex, and it, it was fun. It was just a little different and weird, but you could wind up getting dumped off a cliff, if you didn't do things properly. And it was actually just the difficulty of it. You had to make it in the time that's ticking down, which added a little more pressure. And then the marble would respawn. And this is just the first level. And yeah, the goal is right here. And you got more points the for the more amount of time you have left. And it just got a little more difficult. They added in a black marble that would bump you off the cliff. Like I said, I remember playing this. And yeah, it was kind of a little easier. I believe there was like a 
rollerball control that you use instead of a joystick, which kind of worked a little better for controlling it. I'm just just getting the marble to just fall right off the cliff here, and eventually it's going to get bumped off. Yeah, this was a difficult game, so I'm going to move on to something else. Pit Fighter was a real primitive fighting game by today's standards. I mean, when Mortal Kombat came out, uh, it was, like, way above Pit Fighter. And it, it, it's one of those things where this game kind of stunk. You picked your challenger, you had these graphics, and then you tried to fight your challenger, and usually you wind up getting your ass kicked. Sorry for that word. Didn't mean it. Uh, whatever. I probably won't monetize anything. And yeah, as you see, you're fighting these guys, and you try to do special moves, and you try to do roundhouses and other things. It was a lot easier when you had a joystick, and you could control like four or five buttons. You could get a good combination going to really take the guy down and pick him up and flip him around. Again, this is really difficult with console controls, and my character is getting crap beat out of them, so yeah, I think I will move on to something a little more interesting. Rampage. Now, this was a great game to play with your buddies. I almost bought the arcade one-up version of this game and I mean it was a lot of fun to play with the um, video game machine you could get three two other buddies and you could just smash the cities and go through them it was just a lot of fun again with the console control it's a little more awkward and you know, you got army guys shooting at you, helicopters, and you had to smash the building. You eat the video, you eat the guys, you get uh, life up. And you kind of start, and you smash things. You don't want to stick your hand in electric sign because you get shot. And really, you'd have to try and smash the base of the building. And I'm hopping around here. And they just destroyed the building, which really sucks. And again, I'm trying to get control here and doing very terrible. Pick up the up, oh, pick up the dynamite guy, and here we go. I'm getting the controls to do some damage. Here. But the idea was you smashed the base of the building, so I'll let things play out. A little bit, then switch to something else. Robotron. Now, if I remember this game, it was kind of interesting, and you, yep, yep, you're a robot, and you're trying to shoot and kill these other robots and protect these people. You couldn't walk into the other robots because you die, and yeah, here I go. I finally got shooting going, and it was kind of 360 degree shooting. And you killed the robots. If you save the humans, you would uh, get bonus points. And then you had these other kind of tanky robots that you didn't want to walk into, but you tried to shoot, and they would bounce back. And you try and shoot, shoot, shoot them more, and they'd run away. And 
yeah, this was kind of a difficult game. I'm going to move on to something else. Root Beer Tapper. Yeah, this was a kind of a game that you thought, ah, this is pretty easy, but took a lot of skill. I mean, most of these games, you ended up, they started out like you thought, oh, hey, this is easy. And you thought, ah, I can do this. But they kind of amped up to insane speed at some point. I mean, with Robotron, yeah, that thing kind of amped up real quick. And with this, you got to jump around and throw the beer. And it's, again, with the 360 controllers, it's a little difficult to get control. And you get to the end, and they slide you down and throw you out. I guess I'm going to move on to something different. Smash TV. Okay. I remember this. You can play it with buddies. And you had two people. You shot Bingo. up a lot of guys. It's kind of gory for video game standards at that point in time. And you go into this arena, and I'm probably going to end up, yeah, getting killed real quick. Because, again, I'm trying to get a feel for the controllers. But what happened is, yeah, these guys explode in blood, and you get money, and you get special, you know, weapons that would pop up once in a while. I'm going to resume and try again. Let's look at the video settings, controls. Okay, basically move and fire. And you fired in a 360 degrees and you started out with a um, Bingo. You insert Bingo. point continue. Yeah, that was this is one of the games where you could start where you died. And you didn't want to get surrounded by these goons. You had a force field, bombs killed them, you collect presents, and here we go, buzz song, um, I guess you could say, uh, blade thing, again, this is pretty gory for, uh, video games, but you got force field presents, and you really could build up a lot of money, and you go through and collect the money, and then you move into the next arena, and again, with another buddy, you could really rack some stuff up. So, let's get going, and I'll let it play out a little before I move on. Okay, Spy Hunter. I really was not a driving game guy, and I still am not a driving game guy. But this was one of the first basic driving games, and you could fire machine guns and pick up bombs and get weapons, and you could flip from low to high. Usually I stayed in low because that was kind of still a lot of speed, and it would narrow things down. You could get knocked off a road real easy. Yeah. Again, I wasn't much of a driving guy. And usually Spy Hunter had a steering wheel. So, again, console controls make things a little difficult to play this type of game if you don't have a steering wheel. And, I mean, I remember the, sitting in this controller, you know, you had a steering wheel, gear shift, and a button to fire your machine gun. You were kind of immersed in this game, even though the uh, graphics are kind of crappy. I mean, you're talking 4-bit, maybe 8-bit graphics. And again, it was actually fairly immersive. And again, I wasn't a driving type game guy. I'm dead. I'm going to move on. And on to this next game once I lose this life, I guess. Yeah, 
this was <laughs> a really kind of weird game. You were a guy floating down a river on a tube, and you kind of had to control things and swim your way down the river, going through these gates to gain money or succeed, and you collected beer cans, and yeah, this was just kind of a, a, a really silly game, but it was kind of awkwardly fun, because you had your controller stick and your whatever, you were pressing buttons to kind of get your character to tube down a river. Again, it's just a really kind of odd, weird game, which was, again, odd to spend money on, but I did play it. Yeah, this is an example of how um, the difference between a console controller and an actual stand-up unit controls can really make the game difficult to play. There were multiple buttons you could use, as I recall on Tubin, and a joystick to move yourself that made it easier. Total Carnage, just a reboot of Smash TV. Um, Cyberball, I don't remember playing. Vindicators, nope. Uh, Wizard of War is another game I remember playing. Uh, let it load up here and start the game. It was very basic game where you kind of walked around with your warrior. You could play with two people. And, yeah, look at the graphics. But it was fun. I mean, it was in an arcade and you could shoot and you kind of shot these demons with um, space battles. And, again, look at the graphics. It was very basic. Very 4K. But, hey... Back in the 80s, this was a blast to play, especially if you had another person. And you kind of just zapped these guys and kept going. And I'll flip to a different game. And this is Dungeon 2. I die quickly, I know that. But you kind of have that pac man type flip through the tunnel. And I'm going to move on to a different game. I loved this game. Zybots, no, uh, don't remember 720, so I'll flip back to Xenophobe here. And this game, okay, this was the bomb. You could play with two other guys, and it had a split screen, and you wind up with, you could play, like you see right now, this three split screen. One guy looked at the top, the other guy looked at the middle, and the third guy looked at the bottom. And the idea was you were trying to clear out infested spaceships with these weird alien creatures. And you could pick up objects and they could be used and shoot these aliens and they knock you down. And you looked around for more powerful weapons. I'm going to let this play out a little bit, but let me put it to you this way. Back in, um, when it came out, it, it said 87, but I remember playing it in college, and the first year I went to Las Vegas, and I was 21 years old, and it wasn't in 87, the casino had an arcade in it, or the hotel did, and I'd go and get rolls of quarters and play Xenophobe instead of slot machines or video poker because this was more fun and interesting, and I'd keep eating quarters into it and get a higher and higher score, and again, I spent most of my time just getting rolls of quarters and playing this video game. So yeah, I really enjoyed this game, and if Arcade 1UP makes a standalone for this, I'm buying it.
Yeah, the aliens can knock the gun out of your hand, and then you're left crawling along and trying to find the gun on the ground and pick it up. And yeah, I threw a bomb, but finally we have to this piddly laser thing and these giant aliens attacking. Throw some more bombs. They, yep, get my gun again. I'm surprised I'm not dead yet. This game was actually... Yeah, those ball aliens kind of suck. Those armadillo-type creatures. And you can shoot them and you can go back and forth. You basically walk in a, a circle. I'm going to grab the gun here and shoot these ball aliens. Yeah, I'm getting near death here. But you go into this next self-destruction, which is in 20 seconds. And I'm going to keep talking. Right there. There's a better pistol. I want to grab that pistol. And take the pistol. Shoot the aliens coming through the floor. Yeah, I got a more powerful weapon here. Get beamed up. And on to the next base, I guess. Yeah, this was an awesome game. And it was a lot of fun to play with friends. But I'm going to move on to something else here. Okay, Zybot, 720, Arch Rival, oh, the, the, the Arch Rivals, yeah, I wasn't a sports game guy, Bubbles, yeah, this is kind of like the Marble Madness game, where instead you were a bubble, and you tried not to roll down the drain, but you tried to clean up the dirt here, and you didn't want to get, yeah, get down the drain, and you tried to... Uh, roll over and clean the drain up and you didn't want to get into these scrubby things or just roll straight down the drain but there were ants. It was kind of weird but it was a lot of fun to play. Bubbles was again kind of weird and fun. I don't remember the championship sprint. Now I'm back to Defenders. I wasn't really a driving or sports guy game, but I remember Arch Rivals. I played it a little bit. Let's see. He had the Los Angeles versus Chicago. Obviously, the LA uh, Lakers versus the Chicago Bulls. And, yeah, adapting to um, console controls makes this a little difficult to play. And it was kind of... Difficult to play, even, like I said, I wasn't a sports game guy, and, oop, I didn't make my two points, but, yep, hey, I scored two points. This wasn't, like I said, a, a really good controls. They were simple, simplistic, but, again, I wasn't a sports game player, so I really didn't care too much. And I remember in the arcade, let's see the controls here, yeah. Pass, shoot, and move. Real basic, but, um, yeah. I'm not a sports game guy. And I'm guessing I've gotten through, looks like, all the games I remember playing. There's some repeats here of games that, you know, part twos or whatever. But, again, I'm done. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. As always... Thanks for stopping by. Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, thank you for watching this video. I um, Have a Merry Christmas, and I hope next year will be a much happier year. As always, don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for stopping by.